Hello, everybody. Welcome into After the Game. Tonight with Joe Hillman is uh, 87 National Champion. Joe Hillman joins us here uh, on the program. Jim Coyle with you as always, of course. Joe, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. How are you guys been? I uh, can't complain. Uh, basketball season's underway, so uh, that's always a good thing to look forward to, especially this year from what we've seen so far. This team has looked uh, very good on the defensive end, and tonight no different as they may have played – one of the best – this is one of the best defensive efforts in program history by the numbers. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. Well, We're not playing. Least, we weren't playing Kentucky or Michigan exactly. or Illinois. Exactly. I mean, that, that was the next That statement. team was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, they were horrible. Uh, I but mean, that's when you missed 25 those... shots in a row, Jim, 25 in a row, and probably 18 of those didn't even hit the rim, that's a pretty uh, bad team. Yeah, usually uh, those numbers come from uh, games against teams like that. Um, I remember seeing uh, Steve Downing has the uh, rebounding record at 10 against Montana State. So, uh, yeah, usually uh, those uh, numbers will come against teams like that. But the defensive effort has been a concerted thing, and it's at least it has been consistent. Uh, holding anybody to 19% shooting, that's pretty good. He, he, oh, yeah. As bad as they were. Uh, but to see the consistency and him able – and Mike Woodson able to get other guys off the bench – uh, and playing in that same route, see other guys growing as we've seen. Uh, this this team has looked good, and they've grown throughout these first few games we've seen thus far. Well, they play hard too. I think that's uh, part of it. And then um, I think with Johnson and Stewart, and uh, even the 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 growth of um, Lander and. And even Bates, they're just good ball handlers, and they have a better presence on the floor. It doesn't look so helter-skelter to me, but, you know, even though tonight 27 turnovers, I mean, Coach Woodson's going to have uh, some teaching deal, even though they won. I mean, 27 turnovers against this team is it's just unacceptable uh, because you got to grow from here to keep going and building to get into the, the Big Ten. So they'll be uh, – my guess is in that locker room tonight, it wasn't uh, all gung ho about the performance that they put on the floor tonight. Now they 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 did make some shots, which is good. I mean they they they've been much better with three point shots, and I think some of that is just better shot selection. I mean that I mean a lot of a lot of people always say, "Oh, Indiana can't shoot." Well, they haven't been able to the last five or six years because they don't take good shots. Um, tonight, you know, Stewart, for example, makes, I don't know, what, four or five threes, but they were all good step up, stepping right up into the shot, wide open, and, and just a good shot selection. Yeah, he did. He, he The first one I, I noticed when he pump, pump faked and stepped inside the three-point line, that, uh, and then he hit a second-half three. I think that may have been the first second-half three-point shot he's hit this year because he's usually hit a couple of threes, and that's been it. But he was taking better shots, taking some elbow jumpers, and, and just looking very much more confident out there than he has in the first few games. Well, he's going to settle down, too, a little bit. Um, you know, same with Johnson. I mean, it's it's a new atmosphere, uh, you know, new teammates. The, the whole thing is new. But th those guys, uh, you know, and add the, the Jackson Davis and the Race Thompson and – you know, these three transfers are definitely guys that have a lot of experience to then add to to the two guys I just mentioned. And, and you've got a starting five that's been around the block in, in college basketball, which is something you don't see very often. And, and normally teams that have very good experience, especially at the guard position, are going to do well when you get into conference play just because you're a little bit older. You've been around the block. You, you, you've, you've been through the – the trenches on when the game gets to, uh, you know, a little excitement gets going and and the game speeds up a little bit. The, these guys understand that how the whole thing works. And, you know, I think that's going to be part of the process now of, of what you said, getting more and more guys into it. Those guys that are coming out the bench. The game's got to slow down for them a little bit. And yet there was these are opportunities to get those guys in. I mean, Tamar Bates is going to be a very good player. Um, Geronimo is done he's really worked hard in the offseason you can tell 
he's gotten better, but he still needs to let the things slow down a little bit for him um, and not and not get so caught up in like the stuff that happened tonight here. Um, you know, just play, go out and play hard, and good things will happen. That's uh, Coach Woodson mentioned that in the post game presser that Geronimo was out there doing some things with the ball that he doesn't need to be doing, and they'll get that fixed. Uh, and that's another thing about Woody. He he's just open and honest about everything in there. He says, "Yeah, this is we did this wrong, or this is what we need to work on," and open about that. Uh, the twenty seven turnovers. That is one ugly number. We'll talk about all the good stuff later. But twenty seven turnovers against a team that you, you're or you're so overmatched and they can't hit anything. They can't do anything. I don't know how in the world Indiana turned the ball over twenty seven times. You have to work at it to, to do that. Yeah, they were just careless and, and, and probably taking too many chances because the game got out of control early. So you're trying to do some things with longer passes and yeah, you know, I mean I, I Probably, I don't know, four or five of the turnovers were charges. But, yeah, you just, you, you've just got to be able to take care of the ball a little better. And, and, you know, Geronimo had five or six of those, I think, um, when I was looking at during the game. And uh, that's just not somebody you need handling the ball as much as he did. But Johnson had some turnovers and Lander had some turnovers. And, and those are guys that you got to have uh, taking better care of the basketball. Yeah, uh, other than that, uh, another stat that jumped out at me, though, on the good side, out of, uh, where is the, the total number? 28. They took 28 shots on the night. On 28 shots? Well, they made 28. They took more than 28. Oh, on 28 made shots? That's what I meant to say. Yeah, okay. 28 of 52, yeah. But on 28 made shots, they had 22 assists. Yeah, no, that's really good. The ball was moving around pretty good, and there is some – but there, there is some more movement um, that I've seen where they're, they're actually the first pass or the first so-called seconds taken away. There, there isn't as much stagnant uh, guys just stand around. There's a little more activity going on. Now, going back to the St. John's game, though, St. John's makes a run, and then it kind of reverted back to, okay, who's going to make a play here? And everybody got to stand around and waiting and, uh, you know, they kind of they kind of bailed themselves out at the end of that game. But that'll just be getting used to yeah, – again, again, they played three or four games together. And as the season progresses, you're going to see certain guys that are going to start taking over uh, when it gets to the, the end of games and, and crucial times where plays need to be made. That's just the involvement of a team, a new coaching staff of, of what you expect and – uh, who were expecting to to get those shots. I mean, to me, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the St. John's game, that game got away from the second half because Trace Jackson Davis quit touching the ball. I mean, at some point, a guard's got to go, okay, hey, whoa, 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 everybody. Nobody shoot the ball until Trace Jackson gets the ball down the block and he can make something happen because he's, he is very good down there um, on making moves to the basket, and he will throw the ball back out. So – you know, that, that's going to be – that to me is going to be where this team, how they evolve around making plays when games get tight because that's just been – this group's never never done very well with that. Um, and I think, I think Mike will put – Coach Woodson will put guys in better positions to do the things that they need to do at the end of games when it gets tight. I think one thing that uh, a lot of people will be happy about is seeing them go 10 of 19 from behind the arc tonight, no matter who they're playing, for 52%, uh, especially when you have Syracuse coming up next in that, you know, vaunted zone that everyone – matchup zone that everyone worries about. You know, and I, that's a good point. And I'll bet of the nine misses, four or five of them were, were four shots. I mean, Durer, he – Durer and yeah. Geronimo <laughs> missed three of them. Uh, I don't think you need Durr taking three point shots early in the shot clock. Uh, Lander took one. That was kind of a step back, force three. But other than that, they're good shots and they're open looks. And that's because the ball's moving and, and it's not so much on the dribble. And, and when you get guys that, that can hit just step up threes, that's when you should take a three. Um, you know, as I always say, hey, if you're wide open all the time shooting threes, it's because the other team wants you to shoot them, and it's because you can't shoot. So, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily – just because you're open doesn't mean you have to shoot it. And I, 
I just think there's a better uh, understanding of who's supposed to take a three, when you're supposed to take a three, and we've got other things that we can do. And and let's let's step up and knock shots down. And and that, and you mentioned it earlier, John, about elbow shots and just 17, 16, 17 foot shots. I, I mean, the game has gotten away from that so bad, but yet. Those are good plays when you when you fake, give a little shot fake, step in, shoot a little seventeen foot shot from the elbow and things like that. I mean, one, you're you're hard to guard when you do that and you can get to the foul line. Now they didn't get to the foul line much tonight, but they didn't have to. I mean, the game just kinda um, didn't didn't evolve into that. They shot less free throws than they did three point shots. Yeah, no, that's not a good stat. You wouldn't want that on a regular <laughs> basis. But, no. again, this game kind of got out of control, and um, there there really wasn't uh, – they could really do whatever they wanted to offensively. Uh, and, you know, you didn't get a lot of minutes out of starters either. So you had quite a bit of bench play, which is usually different because, you know, nobody's the, the lead guy when all those guys are playing. Now, Tamar Bates – He's he was probably the lead group and that lead guy in that second group. But you know, I mean, you know, one thing too that the team's going to have to overcome is some injuries. I, I mean, what's wrong with fantasy? I don't even know what happened to him. Well, they haven't told us just yet, and they they're usually kind of hush hush on the injuries until yeah. they sleep. Yeah, out, so, out, so so missing him and missing uh, Galloway. I mean, those are guys that give good minutes. Um, you know, and you can't. It's it's amazing uh, when. Guys get opportunities, though, like Lander has. He, he, he's come back. He's played pretty good these two games where he's gotten some minutes. So and, and the thing that I like the most about this whole thing so far that I've seen is you can tell Mike Whitson's come in here and this coaching staff, and they've worked with guys. Guys have gotten better. Uh, Race Thompson's got significantly better. Geronimo's gotten better. Lander's shot looks way better. Uh, so Lander's whole game looks better. He looks so much more confident in his game. And, and well, you know, looked, last year he shouldn't have been at Indiana. He shouldn't have been playing college basketball last year. He was just too young, and the game's still going to slow down for him. He, you know, he's still kind of a, a skinny. Yeah, he's young. I mean, the kid's a young guy. Um, he's going to get better, but his shot looks a hundred percent better. So somebody's been working with him on that. Um, so. To, to me, you're seeing some development. I think that's the biggest thing that Mike Woodson's going to do. He's going to bring players in. They're going to develop, develop. They're going to get better. And that that's something that w when you remember Bob Knight teams, guys just got better. You know, I mean, they're there for four years, a lot longer. And, you know, now it seems like nobody sticks around very long. But but Indiana doesn't have a bunch of NBA guys. They got a bunch of guys that should be there three, four years. And now is – do they get better each year? And, and if they do, then that's how you build a program. That's how you have a continuous, ongoing program that's year after year after year at the top of the Big Ten. Yeah, and as uh, we look at this team, uh, only four games in, but 4-0, they've gotten better each game, it seems. But the defensive effort from the beginning, and, and he talked about the, the uh, this team being ahead of itself on defense as opposed to offense, but – Defensively, it's night and day from last season. Uh, and for four or five of these to be different faces and to see this team coming together this quickly, that has to be a terrific sign. Well, that's effort. I mean, that, that is a that is basically a attitude and an effort of we are going to defend. You know, we're going to get after guys. We're going to make things hard. We're going to take things away from people. Um, you don't have to be – the most athletic and the and the quickest and the fastest and all that stuff. But you'll just grit your teeth and take things away that the other team wants to do and make it hard for them and then block out. I mean, tonight, I mean, some of those rebounds were, I mean, I mean, when somebody misses really bad, it usually favors the offensive rebounding team because the ball just clanks all over the place. But, you know, they – Defending and taking things away and just making it hard for teams to score is just an attitude. Now, one thing I have seen that I'm sure they're going to continue to work on is they have given up quite a few just straight line drives. They got to they got to they got to shore that up a little bit because these teams that they start playing, especially in the Big Ten, they've got guards and stuff that can that can dribble and create plays. They're going to get to the bucket now. 
Davis has been very good at blocking shots. And so has Ray Thompson. And so you've got that guy back there cleaning things up. But you don't want guys. You're going to get in foul trouble, and and you got to you got to take away just a straight line drive going right to the basket. You got to force guys more down the baseline in the corner and take that away. But that's going to come. And and again, it's a, it's just an attitude and a belief in what you're doing. Hey, don't forget our we're coming. Brought to you by a Southern Stone Restaurant, where you can find the Indiana Men's Basketball Coaches Show each uh, Wednesday night. I have or Monday night. And that's tomorrow night. I can't believe that. Uh, 7.05 and then Wednesday, one more, uh, one or two more weeks with Tom Allen on the uh, football coaches show. Southern Stone located at Patterson and Rogers in Bloomington. Uh, and then also, don't forget about our friend Joe Hillman. What, uh, I can't read that, Joe. You're going to have to read the, the name of, of that, of your company. Oh, Trustful Strategies? Hey, thanks yeah. for putting that up. Oh, absolutely. I just can't read it anymore. I don't have, I have to put glasses on. Uh, That's what happens when you get old. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I just went and picked up my new glasses, brand new glasses, first time the other day. But give us. How was it proud tonight, John? Uh, well, I'm Jim. You talking about John, oh, the Jim, producer? Sorry, geez. Um, uh, it was pretty good because while the students are gone because it's Thanksgiving right. week, there you saw a lot of people that don't get the opportunity to come to games, and, it, I, and I was. You, you can tell because when they were coming in, you saw so many t people taking selfies and taking pictures of themselves. So well, uh, it was a pretty good crowd. There was a block up in the balcony that was full uh, as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of people that get to come to games that don't usually get to come. Uh, well, that's good um, because, because the other night against St. John's, it was a great atmosphere. Oh, yeah, it was a, it was a tournament like uh, the crowd. Yeah, you got to get that back right and, and get that going. And and I was just, I was just interested on in a Sunday night game with most of the students leaving. Uh, how it was, but you know that that also is is something that will help this team. Just having a and Indiana's always had great fans, but there's always that I don't know that oh here we go again type of deal. And and I think there'll be a rejuvenated effort from the crowd and the alumni because of Mike Woodson and he's an XIU guy and. You know, I just believe, hey, fine, this is the right, this is the right move. Scott Dolson made a great move by bringing in an XIU guy, and the people are going to back it and support it, and they're going to give it some time. Um, and and that, that's why I was excited to see the St. John's game, the atmosphere that was created, and then that's why I wanted to. That's why I asked you, Jim, if how it was backed up tonight, just because last year in a game like this, there may have been you know nine thousand people there. Yeah, even had a uh, a walk on hit a three tonight. So uh, getting in and score. So that's always, you know. Oh, that night. was the, the the children's guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he's a Zionsville kid, isn't he? Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, I think he, he is. Uh, yeah. I can't remember which one it is. Well, it's good for him. Yeah, it's good. And Leal hit a Leal hit a couple shots, and he, he's he's looking like he's the game's going to slow down a little bit for him. He's going to be a he's going to be a good player in Indiana. Yeah, and Christian Lander is one that we talked about him a minute ago. But from where he was last year and now, he looks like he is going to be an intricate part because I think when they get to Big Ten play, this rotation is going to shrink. Now, whether injuries help them do that, which they have right now, but normally you get down to a smaller rotation. And, and if Lander plays like he did tonight, he's going to play himself into that Big Ten rotation. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just got to make some better decisions with the ball. Um, but yeah, he, you know, he hit a couple shots tonight, which is good. He, he, he does do a good job of sneaking in there and getting some rebounds and helping on the defensive glass. Uh, and he made a couple of really nice outlet long passes. He made a really nice, uh, long pass to Bates. He made a nice long pass to, I think it was, uh, uh, oh, I forget the play, but, um, maybe it was to Geronimo. Uh, but you know, I mean, he, he gets his head up and he's looking to, to get the ball up the floor and. And that's good. I mean, that's that's the way this team wants to play. They want to play with a little more pace and up and down. And, you know, you're going to have a few more turnovers if you're going to play that way. Uh, but, yeah, no, he did a good he did a good job in the second half of the St. John's game when he was kind of thrown into the fire there. St. John's is making a run. Johnson gets into some foul trouble. Finish, he goes down. And all of a sudden, he's put right in the thick of it. And, and he handled he handled it pretty well. And Indiana have played four games now. Obviously, uh, this is one of the it was just the Hoosier Classic or the Indiana Classic or whichever winner that is. Uh, but St. John's, as you mentioned, a uh, tougher team, and they've got a Syracuse matchup coming up. So they're going to get some early tests uh, and find out where this team is. 
but Syracuse, they they let uh, Colgate put a hundred on them at home the other night. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing for Indiana traveling there, but uh, that's up next for the Hoosiers. Well, Colgate, I think I read something yesterday or today that uh, they had a guy. I mean, they made a ton of three pointers, but um, yeah, that'll be that'll be an interesting deal. It'll be the first time this team goes on the road. Uh, it'll be an actual road game, and and it'll be a it'll be a great atmosphere at the at the Carrier Dome, and so we'll see how they respond and, and how they play, and I and I think when you get a little bit of adversity and and things don't always go your your way that's when you find out who's going to take charge and who's going to make good decisions and and that's why you know I, i've been a big naysayer about what happened with this schedule when tom crean came in and it just carried over to archie miller i mean the schedules is just gotten to the point where we're trying to rack up wins you've got to go on the road you got to go play two or three games before you get into conference, I think, on the road to find out what you got, who are going to be those guys that are going to step up, make plays, and, and make good decisions for you when the game gets going and you're on the road and, and the crowd gets against you. You can't find that out when playing the schedule that we've played the last six, seven years. It just, I mean, when, when you don't play Louisville, Kentucky, Notre Dame, uh, you know, normally a pretty good team – team from the from the big 12 or something like that or the sec i mean you, you don't find out who you are now they play in the acc challenge and the big east thing or whatnot but um that's a great you know this this thing with going to play out syracuse is a very good game for them to find out kind of who they are joe from what you've seen so far i know it's only been four games and it, that's not much of a, a a litmus test for them but They've been pretty consistent in on the defensive side, like we said. The shooting looks like it's progressively getting better, which you have to have because it was not a particularly great shooting team. Uh, they've only had one bad free throw shooting night, uh, so that's always that's a good thing as well. This turnover thing is something they're going to have to get a handle on. But are they looking like you think they need to look at this time? Are they where that they need to be? Well, I. Yeah, I mean it's hard. I mean I don't. I still don't think they're very good. They're not a great shooting team yet. I mean, I, I mean, what are they shooting from three for the for the year? It can't be that good. Um, but tonight there was better shots. There was still a lot of rush shots, um, and that's just getting used to what Coach Woodson wants and, and how we're going to run things. Um, but but they, they still have to take care of the ball. I mean, this is not going to happen overnight. And people have to realize that, okay, we're 4-0. That doesn't mean we're going to win the Big Ten. I mean, we're it, it still got to – I mean, the Big Ten is going to be a tough, tough battle, even though they didn't play very well against the Big East teams. But it's going to be difficult because when you go on the road in the Big Ten, the atmosphere is going to be challenging, and, and teams just – Teams play well on the road. I mean, it's hard to go into Purdue and win. It's hard to go up to Michigan and win. It's hard to go to Iowa and win. I mean, it's it's tough, whether they've got good teams or not. And, and so, you know, I mean, it's they just got to continue to get better. But the, the one thing I do see is if you play hard every night on the defensive end, you're always going to give yourself a chance. And, and, and there's going to be some times where teams make shots and not a lot you can do about it. But just you can stay in games if you rebound and defend. Uh, even if you're not shooting the ball well. And, and you know, they still got to be a better free throw shooting team, even though a little bit. But, but I mean, they they still got to be – I don't know what they're shooting for. It's not 70%. Um, but, you know, I mean, that, that it, it's it's looking better because the ball's moving better. And, and when you've got guys like Ray Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis who can play kind of off each other – in the post and a little bit around the, you know, the 16, 17 foot area, they're, they're tough matchups for guys because they can put the ball on the floor. I mean, race Thompson against St. John's, I mean, he made a great play at the end of the game. The shot clock winding down, um, went to his left and kind of threw up that little floater. I mean, not, I mean, that's a six, eight, six, nine guy doing that. That's a pretty good play by him. Yeah. He's pretty athletic. Uh, I mentioned that uh, Saint, or, uh, Syracuse up next, and it's actually not. It's uh, Jackson. Yeah, they got a couple home games, don't they? Jackson think? State and Marshall at home before traveling yeah. to Syracuse. Thank you. Uh, got excited. Got got looking ahead of that. Well, that's all right. I mean, they, you know what? Those are those are building games. They got to play better 
uh, with the, you know, the, I, to me, I guess the next, I think they play Jackson State on Wednesday. I, I, my guess is a big focus would be let's take care of the ball and let's let's have more possessions where we get more shots in 58. Because think about think about that. If you don't turn the ball over 27 times a night, you probably get up 70 shots. And, yep. and, and now, you can, now you're going to score close to 90. Um, so that will probably be a big focus this week. Uh, you know, the no classes, so they'll probably be in there a couple times a day type of deal. And just keep building. And the Nebraska or the Syracuse game will be a great lead into opening up the Big Ten against uh, Nebraska and at Wisconsin. I mean, those are going to be, you know, those, those will be tough teams. Mike says one thing uh, that worries him is rebounding. While they out-rebounded uh, Louisiana tonight by 10, uh, I think they've done a pretty decent job rebounding. Offensively, I know that they have not been uh, too aggressive on that, and tonight they only had five out of uh, – no, that's assists, rather. Uh, oh, they had 21 offensive rebounds tonight. They had more well, tonight, offensive rebounds than, than defensive rebounds tonight. Yeah, I mean, I get, I mean tonight. I'm sorry, that's with, Louisiana. Never mind. I apologize with, with rebounding the ball tonight. Like I said, Indiana. I mean, these shots were coming off the glass. I mean, they were horrible shots. Now, I, I mean, like I said, the announcer said they missed like 25 or 26 shots in a row. A lot of those were offensive rebounds, and and some of that stuff is just not getting a body on people you can see a guy you know somebody takes a shot and the heads just go up and follow the ball nobody's getting a body on guys they gave up quite a few offensive rebounds tonight but you know i mean again that's just that's just an attitude and the coaches are going to keep pushing that and harping on that but the other team missed a, a lot of shots too and they and again they were I mean, when they took a couple of those three that hit the backboard first, I mean, those are usually long three misses. Misses from long three-point shots clank off pretty hard, and, and it's it's really leads to a break for you or they're going to get a long rebound. Yeah, and they haven't played a team that has really tested them in that yet, um, and I'm not sure. I haven't looked ahead at, at, at the Syracuse to see what they're going to be like, but – uh, they are not going to be tested at least ne the next two games, I wouldn't think, until Syracuse. Uh, but they they have to understand that they have to get the offensive rebounds just as importantly as the defensive rebounds, and that's one thing they haven't done as well. They had, of course, they hit a higher percentage tonight. They only had ten offensive rebounds out of uh, against the thirty-seven defensive. That's that's a ten is a lot better than they had in. I think they had zero in the first game against this. Eastern Michigan. Yeah. There may, that, it was, that Eastern Michigan game, now that I've already forgotten about it because it wasn't very good. But, yeah. um, that I mean, offensive rebound is just going to be a part of our – to me, some of that is do you take good shots? Because, you know, when you're taking bad shots, nobody's even around the around the bucket to, to get rebounds. And so shot selection becomes an opportunity for misses. Um but that's it's effort and it's 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 getting to it and it's getting extra possessions on that. But I, I wouldn't worry so much about offensive rebounds as I would defensive rebounds because offensive rebounds you miss. Okay, let's get back. Let's let let's make sure we're not giving any runouts. Um, but you you want to limit some of their opportunities because that team tonight, you know, they shot the ball awful. Uh, they did get quite a few offensive rebounds, no doubt about that. More than they did defensive rebounds by like 10 or more I yeah forget. so uh, i mean crazy. but but when you're missing that many shots there's that many opportunities so I, t tonight i would take rebounds and throw that stat right out the door i wouldn't even worry about that well they will be doing some running uh tomorrow as uh that del uh, dairy is correct uh, and the post game presser coach did say that they will be doing some running because of those running turnovers they ought to be running running with the ball <laughs> well, they did do some of that. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, the the, the turnovers has got to be a concern. It, it was careless. Uh, they had quite a few in the St. John's game also. So, you know, they got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. And and, and you, you can't – you just can't give it the ball without getting shots. Um, you need a shot every single time down the floor if you can. Uh, and and that leads to the other team getting in more foul trouble. At least you getting the line more, um, and that 
those will just be things that are going to continue to evolve when you're when you're getting more used to what where each other's going. Um, yeah, I mean, really, the only guys that are playing the starting five that have ever played together are, are Trace Jackson Davis and and Race Thompson, and you can see it. Those guys know those guys know where each other is going to be. Um, there are three guys that start. They never play with any of these guys. I mean, they're all transfers. So, um, yeah, I, that's just going to take some time. Uh, before we reset here, don't forget our good friends at Southern Stone Restaurant here in Bloomington, located at Patterson and Rogers, where you can find Mike Woodson's show each Monday night at 7.05, the Tom Allen show each Wednesday at 7.05. Uh, make sure you stop in and uh, have a great meal because uh, it is absolutely fantastic. And our good friend Joe Hillman, make sure we get his uh, – it's it's easier for you to say it. Don't forget, you got to say it. But I. Uh... Oh, where I work. Oh yeah, I, my company's Trustwell Strategies. Tell them, tell them what, what exactly what that is. What the, you can do for them. Well, we are a financial uh, a financial planning financial service company with investments in and retirement income strategies, and that's what we do. We work with people on their accumulation phase of saving money and. As I always tell people, why do you save money? And it's it's to have an income at retirement. So that's what we work on with our clients to, to get them now to retirement, retirement to death. And you can do that with the great Joe Hillman there. So make sure you reach out there with, with the Joe Hillman. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say before I took that break? Oh, yeah, John. Uh, do you have the clips of uh, Christian Lander? Uh, at, Christian Lander got to speak to the media tonight. And even in the postgame presser, I can see his confidence. He, he's not sitting up there shy because it's hard to sit up there. He was by himself up the podium. And so for a young kid to sit up there by himself in front of all the media, which you don't get an opportunity to do, and to be able to sit up there and, and confidently talk, that tells me a lot about where he's come. But, uh, John, go ahead and play that clip. Um, it felt great. Um, I knew that I'm out to, I would have to step up this game and play some pretty big minutes. Um, I just felt like – the work that I've been putting in is paying off, so I feel like I was just comfortable, cool, calm, and collected. Cool, calm, and comfortable, cool, calm, and collected. Not much else you'd want to be on the court. Well, I mean, he's just he's going to get more confidence as he plays more minutes and, and has good minutes, you know, not, not just helter-skelter minutes where he's kind of trying to survive out there. Last year it always looked like he was just trying to survive. He, he, he didn't know when Here to take a shot like or when – or, or when not to take a shot. He, I think he questioned every single time he went to take a shot. Oh, should I shoot this or shouldn't I? He can't play that way. He, he's going to settle down. He, last two games, uh, he's got a lot of minutes, and he's he's done very well for himself. And the more that he gets involved in that and does that, he, you know, now there might be some games where he only plays five minutes, but but that's going to be his role. And, and as he gets more comfortable with that, his play is going to get better. His play is going to get more consistent. I think that, that to me is what they're wanting from Christian Lander. More consistency night in and night out because they know he's a talented guy. We just got to get him to, you know, play the way that he can play, not try to do too much. A couple of his turnovers tonight, he tried to do too much. Yeah, the only uh, player that played more than Christian tonight was Miller Kopp. Uh so uh, Tamar Bates played the same 24 minutes that, that Christian played, but uh, that's for, for a guy that barely hit the floor, that's a lot of minutes for a young guy, and it's going to go a long way. Uh, let's see. Pete's asked, Joe's – I got to put my glasses back on. Joe's take on the offensive rebounds is great. I was frustrated that maybe more of a product of uh, horrible shots, not bad rebounding. Uh, there you go, of course. And Tim said, uh, how long are transfers going to be called out as such in a ball game? Cop transfer from Northwestern scores. I'm not sure what that means. Um, yeah, they, it is what they are. They're, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, unfortunately, that's this whole new deal where you transfer and you get a play right away. I mean, you're going to you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that statement more and more no. because this new rule where you can just don't have to sit out of here. I mean, it's, it's not a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a terrible rule. Um, and you're going to see guys jumping around all the time. So, uh, yeah, it, that change in college guy, athletics. No, I know that and getting paid and doing all that. I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting the next three or four years on this transfer portal and NIL rules and 
what you're going to have to do to get players because it's going to be a highest bidder thing, I'm afraid. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think I agree with you. Uh, Indiana basketball, at least like you said earlier, that Scott Dolson is – he's just hitting all the right buttons. Uh, and he's a guy that – he seems confident, very approachable uh, as well, and I think that's part of that. You have to be. Mike Whitson is the same way. He's a matter of fact. He's approachable. He, he, and I, I think that that's part of how he's reached these players because he took a group in that they seem almost shell-shocked. You look at Christian Lander, how he would look on the floor last year like a deer in the headlights, and this year it's he's a man. He, he looks like a man out there uh, of sorts. So the difference that, is trans, that has happened, the transformation – Indiana basketball seems to be heading in the right direction for sure. Uh, but what what are your thoughts? Well, I, Jim, I think that's just Mike Woodson's comfortable in his skin in Indiana. I mean, Mike Woodson was one of the greatest players that's ever played under Bob Knight. Uh, Scott Dolson understands. I mean, he was he was there every day for four years. He understands what Indiana basketball is all about. These guys that we brought in to coach. Yeah, they're nice guys. They, you know, whatever. They didn't. They didn't get the culture. They didn't get the fans. They didn't get what needed to be done. And they always thought, well, this is my deal now, which is fine. But why would you not want to use the tradition of what Indiana was all about to your advantage? And they didn't. They wanted to go their own direction, and the fans didn't like it, and the alumni didn't like it, and that's why there was no patience for it. So when you when you're talking about two guys that have, have come back here. And Scott Dolson and Mike Woodson, they get it. They get the whole aura of what Assembly Hall is supposed to be and how it's supposed to go about. And I just think they're comfortable with what what they want to try to accomplish instead of trying to make everybody happy. They're like, okay, hey, we know what it is to, to be a part of this. We're going to do it my way. If you don't like it, there's the door. We'll find other guys to do it. I think that's a – I just – just having an understanding of what the people want will buy you the patience to get through some of these early years that are, that are tough. And now, like a guy like Tom Crean, he came in and he basically took us from abysmal deal when Samson left. And I, I mean, I give Tom Crean all the credit in the world. His first couple of years was pretty rough, but he stuck with it, recruited, went after it, and and. He doesn't get enough credit, I don't think, for kind of saving the program when it when it could have really gone the bad bad direction. Won a couple of Big Ten championships. The problem for him was his bad years were just bad. Um, there was no consistency, and I remember laughing at all the people when they oh, Coach Knight's lost, and Coach Knight's this, this, and that. I said, hey, be careful what you wish for. They're still going to the tournament every single year, and you know, last four or five years, we begged for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it seems like hopefully they're heading back in that direction, and you, uh, I agree with you. The, the having the people that understand the culture is a big part of that. That has not been the case uh, before, but it is now. And having uh, all those people back, you see so many people back in Assembly Hall uh, visiting. Uh, the the speech from Hoosier Hysteria with Isaiah Thomas is played as part of the pre pre game, uh, which it's. Perfect. He he, he kind of knocked it out of the park with that speech, I think. Uh, he did a hell of a job. And being it's Isaiah Thomas, he's one of the uh, iconic figures of, of the past of, of the great program. So uh, they're hitting, they're kind of hitting all the marks. But Woody and Woody is doing it, right? He's bringing it along slowly. He's not making any claims. He's just saying, hey, man, we, we're taking it one game at a time. Uh, and he's getting there one game at a time. Well, he knows. What he, what he knows that they they got to get better. I mean, they were not very good against Eastern Michigan. Uh, I mean, the game they almost gave away, and then they they, they played a great first half against St. John's, and and then kind of let that almost get away in the in the first five six minutes of the second half. But he knows they got to get better, and he know and you know what, Mike Woodson also knows it's going to get a lot harder as we get going into the Big Ten season and and some of these games on the road here that are going to come up and um i mean it's 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 a it's a process it, it's just going to take time and but as i've always said you bring in the next bob knight guy or an xiu guy they get a little more leniency as far as what we want to see and and how we want to go about things and 
Uh, there will be some more patience with the crowd just because of who Mike Woodson is and what and what Mike Woodson meant to the program. I mean, I, I say it all the time. Mike Woodson is probably the most underrated player ever to play at Indiana because nobody ever talks about him being one of the all-time greats. He was a great player. But when you, you know, you don't, you don't ever hear his name come up when you say, hey, who's, oh, you hear Scott May, uh, Alford, Cheney, you know, all that stuff. Is that because Isaiah. he didn't get to win a national championship? He had the poor luck of not being on, you know, being on that 81 team or uh, he was well, just yeah, quite I mean, a I think win. That's, that's a little unfair to Mike Woodson. Just as yeah. it's probably a little unfair to Steve Green and John Lonskowski and Calvert Cheney and, um, yeah, I mean, you, you gotta not only you gotta have good teams, you gotta have some luck too to win the national championship. Things gotta go your way. Um, but no, I mean, Woody, Woody was such a good player, um, and, and I just think he's gonna be able to command the respect when he goes into a house to recruit. I, I love it when people say, "Oh, Woody, how's he know how to recruit?" Well, you know what? You go tell guys, "Hey, here's how we're gonna do things. And if you don't like it, see you later. We'll find another guy." Um, you know, I know that sounds kind of harsh and simple and whatnot, but you're not going to get all the best players and you got to be able to coach guys up. Um, and, and I think that's something that, that Mike Woodson's going to be able to do is he's going to be able to develop players from the time they get there and the time that they leave Indiana, you're going to see drastic improvement from each player. And that's, that's what coaching is all about, putting your players, getting them better, putting them in positions to win and and take the pressure off of them by taking responsibility for how the team plays. You know, you talk about culture. You're kind of a perfect representation of that. You just mentioned John Laskowski and Steve Green. And you're a California guy. You came to Indiana from California. I probably didn't know a lot about Indiana basketball before then, but you know all of the moving parts from from prior to that now. Is that just from Coach Knight bringing those guys in when you played or just the part of you be, just embracing Indiana basketball? No, I think Coach Knight made a big – he he – he was big on that. You know, when we were in the locker room, you had everybody that, that had your – that sat in that locker you had there, played up there. You knew who the guys were. And when guys came around, coach made a, a, a real effort to make guys come in and introduce themselves. That, that, and that's been taken away. Now, I, it is different because when we were there, there was really nobody that would come in that didn't play for Coach Knight. Um, and so, I, I – well – I remember the first time I met Kelvin Sampson, and one of his comments to me was, um, well, you know, most of these guys are recruiting now, haven't won a national cha- – or weren't even bored when you guys won a national championship last in 87. I said, well, that's great, Kelvin, but uh, you don't think UCLA uses John Wooden at all? <laughs> and, you know, he didn't He didn't even get – I mean, he, he didn't even understand that. Um, but – you know, yeah, getting the guys to come back, like Isaiah Thomas coming back is huge. I mean, that, I mean, just seeing guys like that, players, whether they ever saw Isaiah play or not, probably not, they know the name. Um, and if they don't know the name, they probably shouldn't be at Indiana. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's one of the greatest players ever play the game. So, you know, I mean, that, that stuff helps. Um, and, and just building on, on – the culture, and that's one of the things that I think Woody's really done a great job of. And I've heard him talk about the banners and the and the tradition and what we're going to try to bring back. And let's not let's not shy away from that. Let, let's use that as a positive and get it going again and and create an atmosphere in Assembly Hall that people don't want to come in and play. Um, now it's 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 really stayed and maintained a pretty tough place to play, um, except for the last couple of years under under Char, or Archie Miller. Um, Green had, you know, he, he, he had it going there a couple of years for sure. But, you know, people didn't fear going to Bloomington and playing in Assembly Hall the last three or four years. That, that to me, um, if you know every single night that you walk on that floor, you don't have to play your best because the crowd's going to carry you through some of those lulls. It, it, your confidence goes up because you know you're going to win at home. You know you can win at home. Then you got to go on the road and squeak a few out. 
Um, and you're right in the hunt for the Big Ten. I mean, that's we always talk about that. Don't lose at home. Let's go win some on the road. Well, you guys didn't win, lose many on the road. That's for dang sure. And uh, the well, we had a couple crowd. years where we did. <laughs> the St. John's crowd here the other night was very uh, tournament-esque, so it was very, very fun. Looking forward to a lot more of that when the Big Ten, Big Ten season starts uh, coming around. And I'm looking forward to doing some more of these whenever you have the time, man. It is always a blast. Uh, yeah, Jim, whatever you – yeah, just call me. We, have, great I, set, man. I, we, we talked the other night. We couldn't do it. For some reason, that game against Northern Illinois, I didn't even get to watch it because I don't even know what it was on. Uh, most people didn't. It was on something called EA, uh, Big Ten Plus, which is really should be called Big Ten Minus. Uh, it was <laughs> terrible. Uh, it was horrible. They had – I looked up over my shoulder, and they had what looked like two VCRs on tripods in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and it was just uh, – Thank gosh I was here, so I don't have to worry about that. Well, it was just really fun seeing that that St. John's atmosphere, and the students were way into it. And it just, you know, I just friends that I have that went to school when I was playing, and and they just see such a, they they always just oh it's just not like what it used to be. I go to a game, it's nothing like. And I said, well, you know, the atmosphere, Coach Knight created an atmosphere in that arena that eyeballs were on him all the time and you know we 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 played a certain style we played a way that that he basically taught everybody on his show on sunday and say hey this is how we're going to play this is what he he demanded that out of us and then he also let everybody know what was a good contribution and then the fans really appreciated that you didn't have to score to make a, a contribution to a winning effort and that to me is going to come back and and Woody's going to bring a lot of that same ideas and passion and, and, and the way to play, but then he's going to have his own stuff. And I think that's what makes it so unique with Mike Woodson is, yeah, he's going to use what he was taught and now he's going to bring in what he knows and what he's done for the last 15 to 20 years of coaching and developing NBA players into this, into this college game. And if you can develop players and get them to get better year after year after year, that again, I go back to what I said 20 minutes ago. That's how you build a program that can be a consistent team that is always in the hunt for the Big Ten. You know, you, you can say your goal is to win the national championship. I think that's – like there's a lot of luck involved in some of that. But you can always be in the hunt for the Big Ten championship, and that's all we ever talked about with Coach Knight. Let's win the Big Ten. Let's win the Big Ten. Because once you get to the tournament, if you've won the Big Ten, now you get in the tournament, you got a shot at winning the tournament. Now things got to go your way, but you can't control any of that until you win the Big Ten. So um, that will be the focus of what's going on with Mike Woodson and, and, and his goals for Indiana basketball will be to win the Big Ten. Well, we'll certainly look forward to it uh, game by game as we go through the season. Joe Hillman, 1987 national champion, cannot thank you enough. As always, brother, appreciate it. Look forward to doing it again soon. All right, Jim. Thanks for having me on, bud. You betcha. Hey, and thank you guys because without you, there's no reason for us to be here. And, John, the producer, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be back. To, gee whiz, this is Sunday, so I'm back on the radio tomorrow already. So, man, uh, back till tomorrow morning. Until then, I'm Jim Coyle. Uh, don't forget, it's brought to you by Southern Stone after the game. Until tomorrow, I will see you on the radio.